Fungi just might be the most overlooked and underappreciated organisms on Earth. Fungi grow on shower curtains, spoil food, and cause illnesses in humans. But humans also eat some fungi and use them to make things that range from bread to antibiotics. Perhaps most importantly, these unusual organisms play a major role in every ecosystem on Earth. First main idea. Fungi may be decomposers, pathogens, or mutualists. Some fungi act as decomposers in the environment. Others act as either pathogens or mutualists to other organisms, including humans. Fungi and bacteria are the main decomposers in any ecosystem. Fungi, such as those shown on the screen here, decompose dead and decaying organic matter, such as leaves, twigs, logs, and animals. They return nutrients, such as carbon, nitrogen, and minerals back to the soil. Because of the large surface area of their mycelia, fungi are well adapted for absorbing their food and can recycle nutrients quickly. This constant cycling of nutrients helps enrich soil with organic compounds. The nutrients can then be taken up by other organisms. Plants and animals could not survive without the activities of decomposers. The ability of fungi to break down tough plant materials such as lignin and cellulose is especially important in woodland ecosystems. Fungi are the main decomposers of these hard parts of plants, which cannot be used by animals without first being broken down by decomposers. The decomposing activity of fungi is not always helpful to humans, however. Fungi can damage fruit trees, and they can also cause, cause damage inside wooden houses and boats. Molds and other fungi inside a house can weaken its walls, and their spores can cause respiratory illness. Homeowners should check for and remove molds that are established in their homes. Like bacteria, some fungi can be pathogenic or disease-causing. A few pathogenic fungi always cause disease. These fungi are called obligate pathogens. The term obligate means necessary or obliged. Other fungi are normally harmless, coexisting with other organisms in a delicate ecological balance. However, changes in environmental circumstances can upset this balance and lead to disease. Organisms that normally don't cause a problem until there is a change in the host's homeostasis are called opportunistic pathogens. A change in the host's body provides them an opportunity to grow unchecked and cause infection. The Overuse and incorrect use of antibiotics is one example of how humans allow pathogens an opportunity to cause infection. Antibiotics can destroy certain beneficial bacteria in the human digestive system, allowing other organisms, such as fungi, to thrive. Typically harmless fungi also cause disease when the immune system is not functioning at its best. For instance, all healthy humans have populations of the yeast candida, that occupy certain parts of their body, such as the skin or the mouth. If a human's immune system is damaged, populations may grow and cause disease. Some fungal pathogens, such as those that cause ringworm and athlete's foot, have fairly mild effects, but several fungi cause severe diseases, such as some lung illnesses, that are hard to cure and can even cause death. Fungal infections are hard to treat because fungi are eukaryotes, and so their cellular structure is very similar to ours. It is difficult to develop medicine that will harm fungal, uh, fungal cells, but not harm human cells. Fungal diseases also affect plants, and they can be especially devastating in agriculture and horticulture. Dutch elm disease is caused by a fungus that is transmitted by elm bark beetles, which are actually illustrated on the screen here. In the United States, the first cases of Dutch elm disease were reported in Ohio in 1930. Today, the disease has destroyed more than half of the elms in the northern United States. Fungi also destroy a large, a large portion of the world's fruit crops. A disease of peaches called peach scab is caused by a fungus and results in millions of dollars in losses to growers each year. Gray mold is a disease that produces such uh, is a disease of produce such as strawberries. This fungus can grow even in refrigerated fruit and is a major cause of fruit spoilage during shipment and storage. 
Fungal diseases in agriculture are often treated with chemical sprays called fungicides. Today, however, crops that are genetically engineered to resist fungi are becoming more common. Fungal diseases in animals, including those in humans, are usually treated with antifungal medications. These treatments usually come from fungi themselves, which produce them as a defense against other fungi. Like bacteria and protists, however, fungi can develop resistance to treatments if they are overused. These products should be used carefully. Mutualism is a symbiotic relationship in which both organisms benefit. Fungi form mutualistic relationships with several types of organisms. A lichen is a mutualistic relationship between a fungus and an algae or photosynthetic bacteria. Only certain fungi, algae, or, or uh, cyanobacteria can combine to form a lichen body. The body itself consists mainly of fungal hyphae that surround and grow in the algal cells, like are shown on the screen here. The algal part of the lichen carries out photosynthesis, making sugars that feed both the alga and the fungus. Some lichens can grow on almost any solid surface, from tree trunks to, solid, uh, to soil to rocks. They are common in cool, dry environments. They can also withstand severe temperatures. This characteristic, uh, uh, this characteristic of lichens allows them to live in habitats such as tundra, where fungi could not usually survive. Lichens play several roles in the environment and, and in the lives of humans. For example, they are extremely important during primary succession because they live on bare rock. Many species of lichens are sensitive to air pollution and can be useful as indicators of air quality. Lichens are also important in nutrient cycling because they function as both decomposer and producer. Lichens produce hundreds of unique chemicals, including pigments used as dyes in traditional cultures and compounds that have antibiotic properties. Mycorrhiza. Mutualistic associ associations between plant roots and soil fungi are called mycorrhiza. More than 80% of the world's plants have mycorrhiza on their roots. Mycorrhiza form when the hyphae of a fungus colonize the roots of a nearby plant. The huge surface area of the fungal mycelium is much larger than the root surface area of the plant, so the mycelium can absorb soil nutrients and water faster than the plant's root could alone. In return, the fungus benefits because it gets sugars and other nutrients from the plant. Mycorrhiza can boost plant growth and reduce the need for fertilizers, which can cause soil and water pollution. Mycorrhiza also produce chemicals with antibiotic properties and help fight harmful bacteria. Some insects also live as partners in a mutualistic symbiosis with fungi. The leaf cutter ants of uh, Central and South America, which are pictured on the screen here, don't just use fungi, they actually grow them. These ants cut tiny pieces of leaf from plants with their jaws. They carry these leaf pieces back to an underground nest er area where they build a garden of leaf pieces. Next, the ants add pieces of the fungus. The fungus breaks down the leaf pieces and absorbs nutrients from them. The ants in turn feed on the fungal mycelium. Second main idea, fungi are studied for many purposes. Many species of fungi are edible, such as the mushrooms we eat on pizza and the yeast we use to bake bread. In addition, fungi make citric acid, which is used in soft drinks and some candies. Fungi are also useful in the healthcare industry. Since the discovery of antibiotics in the 1900s, scientists have been researching how pathogens interact with their natural environments. This knowledge is then applied to develop useful medicines. For example, in their natural habitats, fungi and bacteria compete for similar resources, such as space and nutrients. This is true whether they live on a forest floor or in the human digestive tract. Over time, fungi have evolved natural defenses against bacteria. Studies of yeast have produced equally valuable insights. 
These tiny single-celled organisms are among the most important model system used in molecular biology. Most yeasts have many of the same genes and proteins found in plants and animals. Insights gained from studies of the yeast genome can often be applied to multicellular organisms. And yeast are small, grow quickly, and are easy to culture or raise in the lab.